Hello again, wrestling fans. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. Welcome to Global Wrestling News. Well, we told you last week that Spencer Lee would be making history at the Junior World Championships, and he did just that. Lee entered the gold medal round as the defending champ, but got all he could handle from Kyrgyzstan's Krishid Parpiev. Parpiev hit an early hip toss to go up four. Lee fired back with a takedown and a step out, but gave up another four points on a counter. Trailing 9-5, Lee reeled off eight unanswered points and won his third world title, 11-9. All right, Spencer Lee, man, crazy finals match. Came out, got the job done. Got your second straight junior world title, third straight world title. How's it feel? Tiring. <laughs> it feels good. I only slept two hours last night for some reason. Missed two flights on the way here. It's been crazy. If I had lost, I don't know what I would do. You're emotional, Spencer. What's going through your head? I, I, I just overcame a lot. Like I said, two hours of sleep. I don't know what the heck. I couldn't nap. I was so tired. I was tired before I even started that match. I don't know how I won. <laughs> Well, Spencer walked through this tournament last year, Tony, and you can tell by the interview it was a little bit more physical, a little bit more mentally draining. Yeah, Parfiev was wrestling in his first national tournament, international wrestling tournament. I was surprised that one that he was there, and two that uh, you know Spencer was pushed. He was really, really pushed. But after seeing that interview, you you can tell he's really exhausted by the you know, those flight delays. You know, didn't get he got two hours of sleep the night before. So, um, you know, this is this just goes to show you how difficult it is to perform at a high level, year in and year out overseas. There, right. There's so many different obstacles you have to overcome. Well, America's second gold medal came in much less dramatic fashion. Mark Hall hit an early low single and four leg laces to down Iran's Aman Baregtala 10-0. This is the first time I was like I was just about to cry. Like that's the first time I've ever had tears of joy. So. I was really, like, if I didn't have to come over here, I was really close to uh, crying in Coach Slade's <laughs> arms. But, yeah, it feels good, and it just helps me know that I have I have a, a step that I'm, that I'm on now. And I just got to keep climbing. You know, there's, this is big. There's bigger and better things I can get to. Mark Hall, he's been missing this big win on his resume. Huge folk style guy. He's got the history. I think he won like nine state championships in a row. You know, this is, uh, this again, this is something that um, he, he's needed to have on his belt when it comes to, is he's going down as the, the best wrestler in the history down the road. And, uh, you know, the confidence that he had at the Junior World Championship, completely different than he's had at maybe some of these senior level tournaments so uh, it's good good to see uh, Mark Hall get over that edge get into his own at the Junior World Championships this year. Well first year junior Dayton Fix sent the U.S. home with a third freestyle medal Sunday when he beat out Ukraine's Adri Vyasenko for the bronze. Fix hit two early takedowns to go up four. The Ukrainian cut the lead in half on a low single, but Fix then tacked on three second period takedowns for an easy 10-3. I'm not going to say he cruised to the victory, but 10-3. Fix hasn't committed to a college yet. This tournament has bo boosted him clear to the top. If he wasn't there already, I mean, to have the freestyle skills, the folk style skills, you know, him bumping up to the senior level, you know, that's where we're going to get that real test if, if Fix is here can he, can he step up to, to be an Olympian at one point? Well, I don't know if he's ready for that yet. We saw what Hall was able to do on the senior level, but then again, those matches probably made him a little bit better. Yeah, all depends on the person, I think. Uh, Hall, I, I just I feel like I didn't see that confidence there. So to hear Fix saying, I, you know, I'm going to wrestle at that senior level, I just I get a different feeling from him. So uh, you know, maybe Fix feels a little bit more comfortable in freestyle than Hall did. Well, let's take a look at how it all wrapped up. Russia racked up 66 points, grabbed up two gold medals. Azerbaijan finished 19 points back in second, followed by Turkey, Iran, and the United States in fifth. Disappointing finish or not? A hundred percent. I think this this is a team that I saw finishing the top two, top three. This was uh, this was disappointing for me. Uh, we had we had all these guys on the the takedown radio show, and I was so pumped up that this is the best team we've we've ever seen. Brandon Slade kind of corrected me and said that he didn't think it was, and and uh, they actually went out and they they proved him right. I mean, they they proved that they they weren't the top team out there. So. In the end, we got some gold medals, we had some historic finishes, but overall a team, we definitely left some medals out. 
Well, won't you stay with us? Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the junior women's results from Macomb, France. You're watching GWN presented by Adidas Wrestling. Stay tuned. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to GWN. Our Junior Worlds coverage continues. We now go to the Women's Freestyle Division. That's where college stars Kayla Miracle and Alexis Porter won bronze. Well, Miracle picked up her second Junior World medal with a two-point shutout over Eason Baeva of Uzbekistan. You know, I didn't get the gold like I wanted, and I know I, I know I could be up there right now. You know, they're wrestling the gold medal match, and that could be me. But, um, you know, it is, it is the best one. I've made so many strides this summer in the past few years that, you know, I'm the best wrestler that I've been to this day. So, I mean, that's all right. And if I keep improving like this, you know, a junior world medal isn't anything compared to, you know, a potential Olympic gold. So. Well, a lot of similarities between Kayla Miracle and Dayton Fix. And when you know you can be the best in the world, it has to be frustrating to win bronze in back-to-back -back years. Yeah, she, she's completely different from when she was at the cadet level. I think she just needs to get to her offense a lot more, uh, get to that ag aggressiveness that she, you know, we see maybe her wrestle in the United States, but when she goes over international, just didn't see it there. So with this college year coming up, I think that will uh, do wonders for her freestyle. Alexis Porter, though, hasn't even won a college title yet, so this was a huge step in the right direction for her. In her second trip to the Junior Worlds, Porter crushed Canada's Brandy Perry, hitting four takedowns, a turn, and a 10-0 tech fall for the bronze. This is my second time at the Junior World Championships. My first time I was the youngest in the group, and I was a little nervous. wasn't quite feeling like I was good enough to be there, but I didn't make the team last year. I was really disappointed in myself. I felt like that could have been my year to medal, so... I worked extra hard to make the team this year, got back, and I was like, you know what? There's no one left that can compete with me. I gotta, this is my time. And I think just that reassurance and like the confidence that I've been uh, using in my mental preparation has helped me and made all the difference this time around. So four-time cadet and junior national champion, and now a world bronze medalist, Alexis Porter for me, is going to be a force on the senior level. She's proven herself at the cadet junior level. You know, going up to that senior, that's a whole, that's a whole different ball game, Sky. I mean, she's jumping into a weight class that is seeing Adeline Graves. She's going to go up a weight at 75. We'll see her. She goes down. She's going to have Salada. There's there's Mensa there. Even if she cuts all the way down to 63 kilograms, Elena Periscova uh -oh. is there. So she's got hammers 
up and down the weight class. So I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what weight class she ends up going to. Well, the U.S. picked up a third bronze medal on the final day of women's freestyle, trailing 2-1 in the second. Maya Nelson hit a picture-perfect hip toss and two takedowns, 9-4 the final over Russia's Maria Kutsanova. I have a winner's heart, so I really wanted that gold, but uh, my coach is just telling me this is ste stepping stones and not a lot of people get to be in this position, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to win it. How does this How does this help you? Like, first, first time here, you're junior eligible, you can come back next year. Um, does it give you confidence that going forward? Oh, definitely. Um, the match that I did lose, it was really close, and that girl was really tough, and I just have a lot to learn, and I love being a part of this sport, and I love being a part of this team. I think there's a lot to like about Maya Nelson. I mean, let's start with her ability to, to score points, 33 total for the tournament. Yeah, the ability to score points is what makes wrestling exciting. She was my favorite one to watch. Ton of points, 33, like you said. Her offense, uh, from what we don't typically see, from girls wrestling was on point and we usually see kind of a defensive style from women's wrestling but she's got it going on here's coach aaron vandiver on maya nelson kayla miracle alexis porter and the overall u.s performance in france talk about maya speak to her performance a little bit and then to the performance as a team as a whole getting free bronze okay maya um her as an individual you don't find a tougher kid one that's willing to work as uh, do anything you ask them she is so coachable and she comes into the room every day excited with passion and wants to get better you're going to see in her eyes. She doesn't want to waste any time on the mat, and she doesn't. In her drilling, she's so disciplined. She can see that position just didn't happen. She's been working on that diligently for, for weeks and months and years, and this is uh, how it's built up now, and, and we see it. And it's uh, we were talking about it, you know. She's not thinking out there. It's become a habit for her. Those are her tendencies now, and we're going to see a lot more of her. Um, this whole group, they, they elevate each other. They work so well together. They expect a lot out of each other and hold each other accountable. I think that's really what uh, we saw today, and they were just fighting. You know, they want to fight for themselves, they want to fight for the team, they want to fight for USA Wrestling, and uh, you can expect a lot more of that. All right, so Tony, we finished with three bronze medals, but if you look at the team race, we're still miles away from China and Japan, and the gap seems to be getting even bigger. Yeah, our, our women's program, I mean, you got to look at it like this. You know, they're, we don't get strong until our senior level because a lot of these, t these girls are just starting when they're in seventh, eighth grade, so I, I can't harp on them a whole lot because maybe they haven't been started first grade, second grade, like a lot of these men. But at the end of the day, our women's are, are bringing home a lot more medals uh, on the senior level. So give a little bit more time, get them through college. They'll train freestyle 100%. Well, I think we're, we're in a right spot. It's just hard to tell uh, right now at the cadet junior level. All right, and big thanks to our friends in Macomb, France, for hosting. We've got to take a quick time out. The cadet worlds are just around the corner. We'll talk with U.S. head coach Kevin Jackson. That's after the break, you're watching GWN, thanks to our friends at Yellow Blue Ecotech. Homemade crust, fresh meats and vegetables, 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
Well, the next stop for Team USA is Tbilisi, Georgia. The UWW Cadet World Championships will feature the best 15 to 17-year-old athletes in the world. Cadet team coach Kevin Jackson joins us for a full preview of the team. Kevin, welcome back. Thanks a lot, Scott. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Let's talk about your roster, Coach. 42 kilos. You start with a strong young man out of Leesburg, Virginia, Kurt McHenry. Yeah, I'm very excited about Kurt's opportunity to wrestle in the World Championship. He has all the skills. Um, you know, his offense is off the chart. I think if Kurt stays smart, um, we don't make any mistakes, he's going to give himself a great chance to be a world champion. And so I know he's, he's biting at the bit, and, uh, and it won't be long now before we get over to Georgia and, uh, and he'll have his chance. You know, as we continue to break it down, Coach, one thing that becomes readily apparent is the strength across the weights from 42 to 100 kilos. Would you agree with me in that assessment? Well, I, you know, to tell you the truth, uh, Scott, I, I'm really excited about the future of, of USA wrestling in general. When you look at guys like um, Kyle Snyder, who's who's already Olympic and world champion in his youth, you look at a guy like um, a Jaden Cox, um, you look at some of our other guys, Burroughs is going to stick around for, a, for another four years. You know, you just look at the depth of uh, of our roster at the senior level, and then you take it to the to the junior level, and you see how the guys, you see the guys' results at the junior world championships, and we all know that. We could have had even better results. And then you bring it down to the cadets. And um, and from uh, the lightest weight to the heaviest weight, um, you got to say that these guys are um, pretty good. And, uh, and this is probably what the future of USA Wrestling looks like. And so definitely I'm excited about the opportunity that these guys have in front of them. Coach KJ, breaking down the team that is expected to hit the mats in Tbilisi. Now let's go to Malik Heinzelman at Castle Rock, Colorado. 46 kilos I don't think has ever looked any better. Well, you know, I think this is uh, Malik's second world team. Uh, so he's been there. He's done that. He's, he's had that experience of, of being a part of, uh, of, of a world team. So now he's looking to capitalize um, with a great group of guys. Um, he does an outstanding job training. Um uh, Ike Anderson has been working with him, I know, this year and probably over the last couple of years. And so um, so you see the growth and development out of Malik. He's a straight competitor, and uh, and I know he's excited as well. Couldn't agree with you more, Coach. KJ joins us. 50 kilos. Aaron Cashman out of Spring Park, Minnesota. Is he prepared to cash in? Well, you know, Aaron is a uh, is, is a straight athlete. You know, I, that's one thing that surprised me about Aaron. I didn't know how good an athlete he was. You know, he can play basketball. He he can sprint with the best of the, best of guys uh, on the team. Um, he does everything uh, technically. Uh, he's sound, uh, but his athletic ability is off the chart. Uh, I really know he's excited about having this opportunity to wrestle in the world championship, and and I know he's going to get after it. And I think that it's going to be a great experience, and and he'll have an opportunity to be uh, to be a world champion as well. From core strength to competitiveness, I think our next young man has got to pair that up with a really cool name, Roman Bravo Young out of Tucson, Arizona, 54 kilos. RBY. Uh, I really like RBY. Um, he, he's, you know, I, I just like his mentality. I like his character. You know, he, he never gets too excited. Um, uh, he never gets down himself at all. You know, I know the last three, four days of training camp kind of got old to him. We still were three weeks out. But he was ready for the world championships to happen right now. And, and for him to push through those last three days, like, like he pushed through those last three days, it, it really showed me something about his character. Um, I thought he looked sharper uh, technically with his offense and his counter offense. And I think if he wrestles hard and smart, uh, he's going to have a great chance to perform at the world championships, to be a world champion. And uh, uh, just the kind of kid you like to be around because um, the, his maturity level is off the chart and, and, and really, really uh, fun to be around. Big name to live up to at 100 kilos anyway, Gable Stevenson out of Apple Valley, Minnesota. Um, I mean, you know, what can you say about Gable? I think he's pound for pound up at the top as far as uh, high school wrestlers are concerned. Uh, I can't remember the last time he's been beat. Uh, he's a defending world champion. Uh, I think um, I think the other countries are going to think that uh, USA is cheating on his birth certificate because he still has another year uh, to wrestle at the cadet level. So um, um, he's just outstanding. Uh, his technical skill, um, his athletic ability, um, his work ethic, and just his confidence are, are it, it's off the chart. And, and he knows what it takes to be the world champion. I don't think he thinks um, they're going to give him a title. He knows he's going to have to earn it. And uh, uh, I've talked to him on a few occasions during practice, and, and I think if he moves his hands, he moves his feet, he always has a threat of an attack uh, coming at his opponent. 
Uh, he's going to be very difficult to beat, and, and, and uh, I look forward to him defending that world championship. And, and I don't, you know, Scott, you know me, I'm not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves because uh, it's going to be hard. I mean, we see it at the Olympic level. We've seen it at the uh, junior uh, world level. Um, it, you can say as much as you want about, about the teams, but they have to go out there and they have to prove it. Our young men have to uh, control tie-ups, not let these foreigners slow them down. They can't get caught up in two-on-ones and underhooks. they got to clear those positions. they got to defend their legs, defend their part there, stay on their offense, and we win. Uh, we do those things well at the highest level. Um, we're going to be very happy walking, walking out to Blissey. Kevin Jackson, thank you so much for your time today. A little bit longer than we anticipated, but the Junior Worlds, we needed to break it down. All these young men needed to be recognized for sure. We can't wait to see the results. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks for having me, Scott. This team is absolutely stacked, just like you said. I'm eager to see these guys wrestle. We didn't get to see a ton of them at Fargo, where we typically do, but they took some time off to prepare. You know, some guys like this that are looking to some turn some heads in the Greco world, Moshe Schwartz, Clay Lott, Colton Schultz, among the few. I mean, these guys are the future, so we get to see really are we progressing in Greco or not because everyone's really excited about our junior finish. Well, let me tell you what I'm excited about. I'm excited about quick hits. That's up next. But first, let's take a look at your UWW Big Move of the Week. to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasons are our business, food is our passion. And we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award winning too. Wings and Things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram133 or on my website, teamramos.co. It's time for quick hits. Boise State has announced the hiring of Levi Jones and Riley Orozco as assistants and Andrew Hochstrasser as a volunteer that announced on Wednesday. Great to see Hochstrasser continue to lace him up, not only as a coach, but as an athlete. I've always really enjoyed watching him wrestle. He just hasn't got over that hump, though, on the senior level, so I'm hoping that maybe this this world championship, that a non-Olympic non weight might be the event that he needs to propel himself. Well, we'll know soon enough in November. Well, the Cyclones of Iowa State had a huge weekend recruiting-wise. KJ landed guys like Anthony Mantanona, Jared Verclaren, Jake Aller. Now, we're not just talking about Iowa State all the time because we live in Iowa. The Cyclones are putting together a top recruiting class. Yeah, all, all of these three guys in the top 35 in the class of 2017, Aller was one that I just did not see coming to the Cyclones. I didn't think he was big on them because I knew for Claren and Mintonona, they were they were really heavy on the Cyclones. So this was a monster get out of Minnesota, stealing from up north. So, uh, I mean, heck, 
to pull Verclaren from PA. I mean, that's a huge get for, for KJ, and he, he's really left me speechless with this recruiting, recruiting class. I didn't hear you. Speechless. Speechless. All right. Well, the three recruits joined Ryan Leisure, Marcus Coleman, and Austin Gomez in 27, putting Iowa State to the top of the recruiting ranks. Yeah. Right now, they're sitting really at the top of those recruiting ranks, and believe it or not, I don't think these guys are done yet. Iowa State has a lot of talent that they're looking at at the cadet level, so we might see some more commits after the Cadet World Championships here next week. Well, we close this week's show on a high note with Kyle Snyder standing on the 50-yard line of the shoe in front of over 106,000 and screaming fans during their weekend matchup against Bowling Green. As always, thanks for watching Global Wrestling News, and we'll see you next week.